The 2015 National League Championship Series was a best-of-seven playoff contested between the Chicago Cubs and the New York Mets for the National League pennant and the right to play in the 2015 World Series. The Mets swept the Cubs four games to none for their fifth National League pennant in franchise history. The series was the 46th in league history, and all of the series' games were aired on TBS in the United States. Game 1 was played on October 17th. This was the first postseason meeting between the Mets and Cubs, and first NLCS in which the losing team never had a lead during a game. It was also the first since 2007 to end in a sweep, and the third best of seven NLCS to do so, the other being in 1995. The Mets would go on to face the Kansas City Royals in the World Series, losing to them in five games. As of 2023, this is the last postseason series won by the Mets. This article features a table with the image captioned logo for the 2015 National League Championship Series and some information relevant to the series. The information in the table reads as follows. Team and the number of wins, manager and season. The New York Mets with four wins managed by Terry Collins with 90 wins, 72 losses in the regular season, a 556 winning percentage and seven games ahead in the National League East. The Chicago Cubs, with zero wins, managed by Joe Madden, with 97 wins and 65 losses in the regular season, a 599 winning percentage, and three games back in the National League Central. The dates, October 17th through the 21st. MVP, Daniel Murphy of the New York Mets. Umpires, Ted Barrett, Crew Chief. Eric Cooper, Rob Drake for games one and two. Tim Timmons, Paul Emmel, Bill Miller, and Mark Wegner for Games 3 and 4. The broadcast. Television, TBS. The TV announcers were Ernie Johnson, Cal Ripken Jr., Ron Darling, Matt Weiner, and Sam Ryan. On the radio, ESPN. Radio announcers, John Shomby and Chris Singleton. And the previous NLDS, the Chicago Cubs over the St. Louis Cardinals 3 games to 1, the New York Mets over the Los Angeles Dodgers, three games to two. This article has five sections. Background, summary, game summaries, references, and external links. Background. The Chicago Cubs finished the 2015 season with a 97-65 and record, the third best record in the majors. With new manager Joe Madden, a Cy Young award-winning season from Jake Arrieta, and top 10 MVP finishes from infielders Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant, the Cubs experienced their best season since 2008, when they also won 97 games. Despite their record, the Cubs only finished third in the National League Central, receiving the second wildcard bid and being forced to play the Pittsburgh Pirates in the 2015 National League wildcard game on the road, where they won 4 to nothing. They then advanced to the NLCS by defeating the St. Louis Cardinals three games to one in the NLDS. This was the first time the Cubs won a postseason series at Wrigley Field, sending them to their first appearance in the NLCS since 2003 and their fourth appearance overall. It also snapped the Cardinals' NLCS appearance streak at four. They had appeared in every NLCS from 2011 to 2014, winning in 2011 and 2013. The New York Mets made their first playoff appearance since 2006 with help from their starting pitchers Matt Harvey, Jacob deGrom, and Noah Syndergaard, as well as the late-season acquisition of outfielder Yoenis Cespedes. The Mets finished 2015 with a 90-72 record, clinching the National League East on September 26th with a 10-2 victory over the Cincinnati Reds. They defeated the Los Angeles Dodgers in five games in the 2015 NLDS, their first playoff series played at City Field since its opening in 2009. This was the second straight NLDS in which the Mets clinched in L.A., advancing to the NLCS for the first time since 2006 and their eighth appearance overall. During the 2015 regular season, the Cubs won all seven games against the Mets. Summary this section contains a table with the summary of each game's results with relevant information to each game. The information in the table reads as the following. New York won the series four games to zero. And it lists the game, date, score, location, time, and attendance for each game. 
Game 1 was played on October 17th when the New York Mets defeated the Chicago Cubs 4-2 at City Field. The game took 2 hours and 55 minutes to complete and was played in front of attendance of 44,287. Game 2 was played on October 18th and the New York Mets defeated the Chicago Cubs 4-1 at City Field in a game that took 3 hours and 7 minutes to complete in front of a crowd of 44,502. Game 3 was played on October 20th, in which the New York Mets defeated the Chicago Cubs 5-2 at Wrigley Field, in a game that took 3 hours and 1 minute to complete in front of an attendance of 42,231. Game 4 was played on October 21st, in which the New York Mets defeated the Chicago Cubs 8-3 at Wrigley Field in a game that took 3 hours and 32 minutes to complete in front of a crowd of 42,227. Game Summaries Each game in the series is accompanied by a line score table along with the pitchers of record, players who hit a home run, and the listed attendance. Game 1 was played on October 17, 2015, beginning at 8.07 p.m. Eastern Time at City Field in Queens, New York, with a temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit, 7 degrees Celsius, and mostly clear skies. In the line score, Chicago scored one run in the 5th and 8th inning each for two runs and five hits in the game. New York scored one run in the 1st, 5th, 6th, and 7th innings, scoring four runs with eight hits and one error. The winning pitcher was Matt Harvey with a 1-0 record. The losing pitcher was John Lester with an 0-1 record. The save was Jerry's Familia, his first. Home runs were hit by Kyle Schwarber for Chicago, his first, and for New York, Daniel Murphy and Travis Darno, each their first. The attendance was 44,287. Having used aces Jake Arrieta and Jacob deGrom late in their respective division series, the Cubs turned to John Lester and the Mets to Matt Harvey for Game 1 of the championship series. Daniel Murphy, fresh off a division series in which he hit three home runs, jumped Lester early on with a home run in the first inning. Lester would settle down, only allowing that lone run through four innings, but Harvey was even better, throwing four perfect innings as he blew away the Cubs hitters. After getting ahead of Anthony Rizzo on an 0-2 count, Harvey came inside with the fastball and plunked the Cubs' first baseman on the arm, allowing Rizzo to reach base as the first Cubs base runner of the night. The next batter, Starlin Castro, jumped Harvey for a double that eluded the reach of Gold Glove winner Juan Lagares in center field that scored Rizzo and knotted the game at one. Harvey would retire the fouling batter, Jorge Soler, on a ground out to third, forcing Castro to hold at second, but subsequently allowed a base hit to left by Javier Baez. Testing the strong arm of left fielder Yoenis Cespedes, Castro attempted to score on the hit by Baez, but was thrown out at the plate by Cespedes in plenty of time, helping Harvey escape the inning having only allowed the one run. In the bottom of the fifth, Wilmer Flores and Ligares would both reach on one-out singles against Lester, bringing Harvey up with runners on first and second. The Mets starter attempted to move the runners over with a sacrifice bunt, but did so right towards the first baseman Rizzo, who fired over to third to force out Flores for the second out of the inning. The third baseman, Chris Bryant, attempted to make a return throw to first base, which may have forced out Harvey for a double play, but Bryant fumbled the ball from his glove hand to his throwing hand, allowing the inning to continue. The next batter, Curtis Granderson, then blooped a single into center field to score Ligares and help the Mets regain the lead. Once again with the lead, Harvey would regain control and blank the Cubs in the top halves of the 6th and 7th, while the Mets would add runs off of Lester. Travis Darno hit a home run in the 6th inning off of City Field's home run apple in center field. The Mets would then manufacture another run in the 7th after a Ligares leadoff single. After Harvey sacrificed Ligares to 2nd, the Mets center fielder stole 3rd with 1 out, 
setting up a Curtis Granderson sacrifice fly to make it a 4-1 to one game. With Harvey still pitching into the 8th, Kyle Schwarber smoked a home run deep into the Cubs' bullpen in right center, ending Harvey's night after 7 and 2 thirds innings, having only allowed 2 runs and 4 hits to go along with 9 strikeouts. Mets closer Jury's Familia came on for the 4-out save and would finish it off for Harvey, getting help from a diving play from Daniel Murphy for the last out of the game. This section features six images with the following captions. The Mets and Cubs reserves and coaches stand on the field for introductions before Game 1 at City Field. Image 2, Wilmer Flores batting before hitting a single. Image 3, Matt Harvey at bat prior to bunting into a fielder's choice. Image 4, Curtis Granderson takes an at bat before driving in Juan Lagares with an RBI single. Image 5, Trevor Cahill pitches for Chicago in Game 1. Image 6. Jury's Familia enters for the save. Game 2. Played on October 18, 2015 at 8.07 p.m. Eastern Time at City Field in Queens, New York, with a game time temperature of 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, in clear skies. Chicago scored one run in the game in the sixth inning with one run, five hits, and zero errors. New York scored three runs in the first inning and one run in the third inning with four runs, five hits, and zero errors. The winning pitcher was Noah Syndergaard with a 1-0 record. The losing pitcher was Jake Arrieta, an 0-1 record. The save to Yuri's Familia, his second, and home runs, Daniel Murphy, his second for New York with an attendance of 44,502. Looking to rebound and tie the series, the Cubs turned to ace Jake Arrieta in a matchup against Mets rookie Noah Syndergaard. Much like in Game 1, the Mets got on the board in the first inning after a Curtis Granderson single, a David Wright RBI double, and a Daniel Murphy two-run home run to give the Mets a 3 to nothing lead through three batters against Arrieta. For Wright, it was his first hit in RBI since Game 1 of the NLDS. Murphy's home run extended his streak of consecutive postseason games with a home run to four and also gave him five home runs for the entire postseason, a Mets record. The Mets added another run in the third on Yoenis Cespedes's RBI single to score Granderson. The four runs were all Syndergaard needed. He pitched five and two-thirds innings, striking out nine while only walking one. He allowed only three hits, the last of which was a Chris Bryant RBI double that played the only run against him and ended his outing in the sixth inning. Mets relievers John Neese, Addison Reed, Tyler Clippard, and Yuri's Familia combined for three and a third scoreless innings to finish off the win, giving the Mets a 2-0 series lead. Game 3 played on October 20th, 2015 at 8.07 p.m. Eastern Time at Wrigley Field in Chicago, Illinois, with a game time temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit, 22 degrees Celsius, and partly cloudy skies. New York scored one run in the first inning, one run in the third inning, one run in the sixth inning, and two runs in the seventh inning, for a total of five runs, 11 hits, and zero errors. Chicago scored one run in the first inning and one run in the fourth inning for two runs, five hits, and one error. The winning pitcher was Jacob deGrom, a 1-0 record. The losing pitcher was Trevor Cahill, an 0-1 record. The save to Yuri's Familia, his third. Home runs were hit by Daniel Murphy, his third for New York, Kyle Schwarber, his second for Chicago, and Jorge Soler, his first for Chicago. The attendance was 42,231. Hosting their first NLCS game at Wrigley Field in 12 years, the Cubs started Kyle Hendricks in an attempt to pick up their first win of the series. Though Mets leadoff hitter Curtis Granderson reached base after an error by shortstop Javier Baez, he was caught stealing to negate the misplay. The Mets still scored one run in the frame after a Yoenis Cespedes RBI double, but the caught stealing proved costly as the Mets were unable to capitalize any further. The Cubs tied the game in the bottom half of the inning after a Kyle Schwarber opposite field home run off of Mets ace Jacob deGrom, 
but they too missed an opportunity to inflict further damage. Anthony Rizzo and Starlin Castro hit back-to-back two-out singles off of DeGrom, but Jorge Soler grounded out to end the threat with the game still tied at 1-1. Daniel Murphy continued his historic hot streak with yet another home run, a shot to center field to give the Mets back the lead in the top of the third. For Murphy, it was his sixth home run of the postseason, making him the all-time Mets postseason home run leader in just eight games. It was also his fifth consecutive postseason game with a home run, tying Carlos Beltran's all-time mark from the 2004 postseason. The Cubs tied the game on a Soler home run in the fourth, but DeGrom allowed nothing further. After a first inning where he gave up three hits, the only hit DeGrom allowed was a Soler home run. Meanwhile, Hendricks was pulled after four innings as Joe Madden turned to his bullpen starting in the fifth. Left-hander Clayton Richard escaped the fifth inning unscored upon after inducing a double play for Murphy to retire the side. Right-hander Trevor Cahill was called upon next for the sixth, and he promptly gave up a single to Cespedes to lead off the inning. The struggling Lucas Duda, at that point just 3-for-23 in the postseason, attempted to bunt against the infield shift, but was thrown out at first for what was ruled a sacrifice, advancing Cespedes to second. Cespedes then stole third base with one out, but Cahill retired Travis Darno on a ground out to third with the infield drawn in, forcing Cespedes to hold at third. The following batter, rookie Michael Conforto, saw nothing but curveballs from Cahill, who often bounced his curveballs despite the go-ahead run being on third base. Catcher Miguel Montero was up to the task of blocking Cahill's curveballs in the dirt until the 2-2 pitch when Conforto chased another curveball for strike three. Montero could not handle this last curveball, allowing it to get past him and roll to the backstop. Conforto would reach first safely after the uncaught third strike, while Cespedes scored to give the Mets back the lead for the third time. The Mets were presented with more opportunities in the seventh due to more defensive miscues by the Cubs. With one out and facing new reliever Travis Wood, David Wright doubled down the line and left, narrowly beating the throw from the left fielder Kyle Schwarber. The next batter, Daniel Murphy, hit a soft tapper towards the hole between the third baseman Chris Bryant and the shortstop Javier Baez. Bryant fielded the ball moving to his left, but double clutched before throwing to first, allowing Murphy to reach safely for an infield single as Wright advanced to third. Looking for a strikeout, Madden inserted Justin Grimm to replace Wood, but Cespedes would follow with a line drive to deep left that glanced off of Schwarber's glove, going for what was ruled to be a long RBI single with Wright scoring, Murphy advancing to third, and Cespedes reaching second after Schwarber's throw went to third. Duda followed with a run-scoring ground out fielded by Anthony Rizzo, who elected to step on first base to force out Lucas Duda before throwing home, giving Murphy extra time to score from third. With the Mets up 5-2, DeGrom shut the Cubs down with a perfect seventh inning, ending his night having only allowed four hits in two runs while striking out seven. He would pick up the win after Yuri's Familia finished off the ninth inning for his third save in as many games in the series and his fifth save of the postseason, giving the Mets a commanding three games to zero series lead. Game four was played on October 21st, 2015 at 8.07 p.m. Eastern Time at Wrigley Field in Chicago, Illinois, with a game time temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit, 22 degrees Celsius, and partly cloudy skies. New York scored four runs in the first inning, two runs in the second inning, and two runs in the eighth inning, for a total of eight runs, 11 hits, and zero errors. Chicago scored one run in the fourth inning and two runs in the eighth inning for a total of three runs, six hits, and zero errors. The winning pitcher was Bartolo Colon with a record of 1-0. The losing pitcher was Jason Hamill with a record of 0-1. Home runs were hit by Lucas Duda, his first, Travis Darno, his second, and Daniel Murphy, his fourth, for New York, while Chris Bryant hit his first home run of the series for Chicago. The attendance was 42,227. The Cubs enter Game 4 facing the daunting task of having to overcome a three-games-to-zero series deficit, 
done only once in MLB history when the Boston Red Sox defeated the New York Yankees after losing the first three games of the 2004 ALCS. Attempting to repeat the accomplishment was Cubs president of baseball operations Theo Epstein, who was the general manager of the Red Sox in 2004. However, as was the case in every previous game of the series, the Mets took the first lead of the game in the first inning. Lucas Duda, just one for six in the series in the first three games, launched a three-run home run to center field against Cubs starter Jason Hamill to get the Mets off to a fast start again. The next batter, Travis Darno, also took Hamill deep with an opposite field home run to make it 4 to nothing before the Cubs would even step up to the plate. After Mets starter Steven Matz quickly retired the side in order in the bottom of the first, Hamill issued a one-out walk to David Wright in the top of the second, ending his night as Joe Madden quickly went to his bullpen. Reliever Travis Wood allowed a two-run double to Duda later in the inning, making it a 6 to nothing game. Mats held the Cubs hitless through three innings, but Chicago mounted its first rally in the bottom of the fourth, loading the bases with nobody out for Starlin Castro. Though Castro hit a bullet of a line drive, David Wright made a leaping grab at third base to save an extra base hit and at least two runs. The Cubs would score their first run after an RBI ground out from Kyle Schwarber, but Javier Baez popped out in foul territory near the Cubs' bullpen, stranding two runners and leaving the Cubs trailing 6-1. to one. In the bottom of the fifth inning, Matz looked as though he would retire the Cubs in order, but with two outs, a Dexter Fowler fly ball dropped into shallow right field after a misplay by second baseman Daniel Murphy. Fowler, however, was not hustling out of the batter's box and thus only made it to first base. He was not in scoring position when the next batter, Jorge Soler, singled. Matz was chased from the game as Bartolo Colon was called upon to make his first relief appearance of the series. The veteran Colon struck out Chris Bryant and again the Cubs stranded two base runners. The Mets themselves wasted opportunities to extend their lead, getting Wilmer Flores on third to lead off the top of the sixth, as well as having the bases loaded in the top of the seventh, but failing to score in both innings. However, in the top of the eighth inning, New York padded its lead with a two-run home run from Murphy, his fourth home run of the series, his seventh of the postseason, and his sixth consecutive game with a home run, a new postseason record. Though Bryant hit a two-run home run in the bottom of the eighth off New York reliever Tyler Clippard, he allowed nothing more. Yuri's Familia finished off the sweep by striking out Dexter Fowler, sending the Mets to the World Series for the first time since 2000. After hitting 529 with the four home runs and a 1.294 slugging percentage for the series, Daniel Murphy was named the NLCS MVP. By coincidence, the Cubs' 2015 season ended on the same day as the 2015 World Series that was depicted in the 1989 movie Back to the Future Part Two. In the film, the Cubs swept a fictitious Miami team. The actual 2015 World Series saw the Mets lose to the Kansas City Royals in five games, but the Cubs went on to win the next season's edition, defeating the Cleveland Indians in seven games. Composite Line Score in the four games of the 2015 NLCS, the Chicago Cubs scored a total of eight runs with 21 hits in one error. One run in the first inning, two runs in the fourth inning, one run in the fifth inning, one run in the sixth inning, and three runs in the eighth inning. The New York Mets scored 21 runs with 35 hits in one error, scoring nine runs in the first inning, two runs in the second inning, two runs in the third inning, one run in the fifth inning, two runs in the sixth inning, three runs in the seventh inning, and two runs in the eighth inning. The total attendance of the series was 173,247, with an average attendance of 43,312. References The written version of this article displays numerous references, including to game box scores and news articles near the time of the event. External links the written version of this article includes an external link to MLB.com's 2015 postseason coverage. The bottom of the written version of this article also contains links to other relevant Wikipedia pages, including the 2015 MLB postseason, the NLCS, the MLB on TBS, MLB on ESPN Radio, the Chicago Cubs, and the New York Mets. 
That concludes the spoken version of this article. Thank you for listening.